Okay, and we are live for video two in our five and five series. G'day guys, Tom Willis here. Thank you so much for joining me again. Um, thank you for all of you, all of those who watched the first video, who gave me some lovely feedback um, and a couple of tips and, and, a, and bits of advice along the way. It's all very much appreciated. Um, and it's lovely to see people engaging with the content. So let's keep going. Today, uh, in video two, we're going to be talking about a, a special little macro that I've made uh, to handle um, making my by type color palettes. So I'm going to show you that now. Let's jump in. Oh. Okay, stopwatch on, five minutes. Hopefully I do a little bit better than the last one that went over. Um, so I've got my rig here. Um, I've added to it. I've added a couple more fixture types here. I'm just going to um, throw up some different um, some different fixtures here. So I'll grab my overhead encores. I'll turn them on. I'll grab my. I've got some X4 um, GLP X4 impressions. I will turn them on and I will put them in a downstage position. And I will grab. Uh, I've got some quantum washers as well, which I'll turn on and put into a downstage position. There we go. So I've got three types of fixture here. And what I want to do, um, uh, this was a, a macro that I developed when I was working with a particular designer who had this, this fun habit of throwing random colors at me in the middle of a plotting session, like colors that I hadn't palletized, colors just out of nowhere. He'd go, oh, can you make that, um, uh, that lamp, you know, Lee 132. And of course, ETC EOS has this fantastic ability to be able to just call up gel numbers just by you know using the syntax color three dash or color four dash gives you um, reference to different um, uh, brands of color media so for example um, if I were to say grab uh, my one of my uh, quantum washes here and he's like oh, I want that to be uh, Lee um, what's a good color Lee let's go Lee 200 okay right uh, so he goes, channel 41, I want that at Lee, four, uh, Lee 200. The way I do that syntax wise, I select color, and then I type three dash, which defines Lee, the Lee swatch book, as opposed to the Roscoe swatch book or the GAM swatch book or whatever. And then I just type the, the color number, 200, bang. And you can see there, it's not a, I haven't picked a really good color here because you, you can't really see the difference there that much. Let's pick, um, say, Lee 106, right? So let's do the same thing again. Color three dash 106 gives me um, saturated red. Okay, or I could go color three or color four dash uh, eighty gives me Roscoe eighty, which is uh, which is obviously a blue. Now my designer would give me that color and go, yep, I like that color. That's great, and then would just carry on with plotting, and I would need to quickly um, palletize that color and ideally palletize it in a way that I could then access it. Um, through other fixtures, and of course, by type does that in a in a, in a um, within that fixture group. Um, let's uh, just record that as a by type palette now. If I go forty one record color palette one, uh, and then make it a by type palette, right? Click enter. There it is. Um, you then find that I can then use that color palette for all of my Mac encores. But I can't use it for any, sorry, uh, that is for, for my quantum washes. I can't use it for any of my encores. If I select my encores, uh, you'll see it's gone gray and there's no data there for that. Likewise, if I pick my X4s, I can't reference that color. So I have to do that again. Um, there's also the thing of, I would like to keep all my color palettes, my by type color palettes in one place in my show file so that if I want to import these color palettes um, into another show file, um, and build on them, I can do that nice and easily. So what I do, in a nutshell, gotta keep this quick, is if I go to my groups over here, my groups list, you can see, sorry, not my groups list, my patch, you will see in my 4000s, I make um, uh, a kind of a dummy fixture uh, for each type. So I've got a, an on-call performance, I've got an impression X4, I've got a source for Luster 2, and I've got a quantum wash, okay? Uh, just in the 4000s here. So this is where I'm going to put that color palette data, that by type data. And what basically happens, oops, we'll come back to that in a second, is that 
uh, let's do a different light, a different color. Let's pick one of our X4 impressions. I'll pick 25 through 27. And my designer guys, I want them to be in Lee 138, right? Uh, so we go 25 through 27. Color palette, Lee 138. Bang, like that. And he goes, yep, I want that. Let's move on. Okay, great. All I have to do is I press my special global color palette maker macro. Blah, 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 blah. And now the desk is uh, asking me to move this new color palette 999 to somewhere. So I'm just going to select my next available color palette. Bang. And we now have a new by type color palette there. I'm just going to change the label of it quickly to 130, Lee 138, so I know what it is. What you'll find with this color palette, as opposed to the first one that we made, is a couple of things. Firstly, if we select, um, say for example, uh, a type of light um, that we didn't previously have selected, say our quantum washes, we can apply that color palette to the quantum washes, we can apply it to our encores, we can apply it to the rest of our X4s. Okay, so the color palette works across, across all my fixture types. Okay, the other cool thing that it does is it actually puts the data for that color palette uh, into one of those 4000 number channels. So, and that's consistent no matter what color you're using, no matter where you are in the show, no matter what fixture you pick to build that color on, it always transfers that color data to those 4000 range channels. And that means all of your buy type information stays in the one spot. So it's easy to then see where it is and it's easy to edit and it's easy to import or export. Um, the other cool thing that this macro does is it then takes the data from that by type channel and it shoots it back into the lights that were selected so that the process is seamless and invisible. Um, because what you don't want is to harvest that color data out of the lights that we had selected, make this lovely preset and then not apply that preset to the lights uh, that we currently have selected because what would happen then is you'd update that queue and while you had the preset, or sorry, that you had the color palette ready to go, the color palette hadn't actually been applied to those lights and those lights still had raw data, which is of course something that we don't want. How do we make this macro? Okay, I'm gonna show you quickly because we're already over five minutes. Where does the time go? Um, Let's go to my macro page. Basically what I do is my first step is after I've uh, selected the lights and put a new color into them. And this doesn't just work with, um, with Lee colors. It works with random manual colors that you've made using your encoder wheels. It kind of works across the board. It's a really um, cool little device that leverages the power of the ETC EOS color engine. So after I've say grabbed channel 24 and I've made a new color in that, um, the first step of my macro is to select that channel and to record it to group 999. So if you have a look over here in my groups list, I have two groups down the bottom here, which are my color maker group and my by type group. You can see that my by type group has all of my by type fixtures included in it. The color maker group will um, be updated each time I run that macro. If we go back to our macro editor, you'll see that the first step is to take our selection and record it to group 999. This is a common way with ETC macros of essentially kind of creating, of kind of harvesting data and moving it around your desk. Um, in MA2, you'd be using something like variables to do a similar kind of thing. Um, the next step is to grab our by type group, so group 1000, and do a color recall from group 999. And what this does is it basically takes the color data out of that selected fixture and then um, applies it across all my by type fixtures. Um, it makes it manual and then it records that. Uh, so it basically severs any, um, uh, uh, any connections to other palettes um, or any other data that we might have. And then it um, records that as color palette 999 and it creates it as by type palette. It then um, removes the data from group 1000 so it turns all those lights back off so that we don't inadvertently start recording um, uh, data on those channels into our show file. It takes group 99 um, and, and uh, selects that color palette 999 so it puts our original selection back into the color palette. Uh, it clears the command line and then um, it, the final line of our macro basically takes color palette 999 
and moves it to and that's where the macro leaves you. So the next step after you run that macro is to select where you want that color palette to live. And that's how we then um, uh, assign that color macro to wherever we want. So I'm gonna run the color macro one more time just so you can see it again in action. So let's go, let's just put our, our lights into different colors here and now I'm just going to select maybe a... What haven't we done before? We haven't done the, the Source 4 Lusters. So we'll grab some Source 4 Lusters, turn them on, and we're going to put them into... I'm just going to make a random color here using my moving light controls. So my designer goes, oh, can you just give me the red and amber chips of that? Those Lusters. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, now just throw a little bit of green into that. So I'll throw 50% green into it. Yeah, and maybe add a little bit of cyan at 25. Okay, done. That's the color he wants, or she wants. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go Global Color Palette Maker, do your thing, and it does all of those steps pretty much instantaneously and goes, where do you wanna put that color palette? I'm gonna put it in my next available and I'm gonna call it um, LD's Amber, like that. And now I'm going to turn off all my fixtures. I'm going to, oh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to undo that. So you can see that if I uh, go to my source fours in my live table, you can see that they've got that palette in there. You can see in my color palette list, LD's amber, that our buy types are all nicely organized. And you'll see if we go back to our live display that when I grab uh, another group of fixtures, like say my quantum washers, and put them into LD's Amber, no issue. Now, one last little note on this. Um, the color science by which ETC uses is really, is really awesome. Um, but of course it has its limitations based on the, um, the color, the, the nature of color mixing in each of the different fixtures that you use. And ETC doesn't have control over that. They can only approximate these colors. Um, and that approximation gets further from the mark um, when you start using fixtures that aren't ETC fixtures, when you start using cheaper fixtures or more generic fixtures, okay? So this isn't a perfect system for nailing that particular swatch, but it's a starting point. Um, and that's what I find super useful um, in the context of making these color palettes is it gives me a place to start. It gives me a color palette that's labeled, that's across all my fixtures. And now if my designer wants me to, uh, to tweak these, I just need to do a little update. All the, the legwork of setting up the color palette is done. Um, and then we can finesse from there. So guys, that's my global color palette maker. I hope that's uh, that's been an interesting video. Ugh, we went even longer than the last video. These five minute videos, <laughs> this is never gonna happen. Um, sorry about that. I hope you guys, I hope that all made sense. I hope you found it um, informative and useful. Any questions, feel free to chuck a comment in the video below and um, we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks so much guys, catch you.